my name is Lindsay and I'm a researcher at the Centre for Clinical Microbiology at UCL. Today we're going to be doing the rapid PCR barcoding kit, so that's um, RPB114.24. Um, you can see we've got the contents, uh, these are the various different tubes, um, and so we're going to put those on ISO, um, as it says in the protocol, which we've linked to, um, you um, vortex or spin down um, and prepare. So just follow the protocol on that. So to start with, we need to transfer one to five nanograms um, of DNA into a tube and adjust the volume to three microliters with water. Uh, what I've done is prepare an Excel template spreadsheet so you can input all of this information in. So to begin with, you put in um, you need to input information into all of the yellow boxes, so um, sample ID, um, the qubit concentration, so you need to qubit or um, identify the concentration before you start. You also need to um, add barcode numbers and then the spreadsheet will calculate how much DNA and how much water you need to put in to normalise them. So um, that's what I'm going to do now. So we have an equal concentration of DNA in each of our samples. The next thing we need to do is add FRM and we need to add one microlitre to all of our tubes. Great, we can put that back on tight. We've got our samples. We can now give them a gentle flick to mix. In a thermocycler, incubate the tubes at 30 degrees for two minutes and then 80 degrees for two minutes. Once that's finished, we can get it out of the PCR machine. And then we're going to prepare the PCR reaction. So we've got four microliters of our DNA. Uh, we need 20 microliters of nuclease free water, one microliter of each of the barcodes and then 25 microliters of long amp um, master mix. So this is a third party reagent that you can get from NEB. So we're gonna prepare that now. Again, we're going to mix gently and then spin up. then go back on the PCR machine using the conditions mentioned in the protocol. Once the PCR is finished, you can take the tubes out. And the next step is to add four microliters of EDTA to each sample to stop the reaction. Again, give them a gentle mix to make sure the EDTA is spread through the sample. 
and then these need to be incubated at room temperature for five minutes. Once the samples have been incubating for five minutes, we then need to qubit the samples. So take one microliter um, and identify the concentration. This will then allow us to pool all the barcodes in an equimolar ratio, um, depending on the concentrations that you've got up to 800 nanograms. Again, this is on the spreadsheet. You can see that there in the red, there's the input to pool column um, and the total nanograms that you want to put in your pool. So I've got a low bind Eppendorf tube and I'm now going to pour all of the samples at the desired ratios. So I've got a low bind Eppendorf tube and now I'm going to pour my samples as per the spreadsheet. So now we've got our pooled samples. The next step is to clean up um, our pool using Ampure beads. So the Ampure beads come in the tube like this. Uh, we need to make sure that they're very well mixed. And as per the protocol, you need to add 0.6 times beads compared to the volume of your pool. So we've got 37 microliters in here. So we need to add 22.5 microliters of beads. This needs to be incubated on a hula mixer for five minutes at room temperature to allow the DNA to bind to the bees. Once that's mixed, you can spin it down if there's liquid on the side, and then it needs to go on the magnetic rack. Whilst the beads are moving towards the magnet, you can prepare 80% ethanol, so this needs to be prepared fresh every time you do this. What you'll see after a few minutes is the magnetic beads um, all have gone to the back next to the magnet and taken the DNA with them. And what's left will be the liquid, which you now need to remove. Be very gentle at this stage because the beads can become unstuck and we want them to stay on the magnet. This is just my waste bottle. What we now need to do is wash the pellet with one milliliter of ethanol that we prepared earlier. So you gently put the front of the tube away from the, mag uh, the magnetic beads, add the one mil. Remove that and do the same again. Leave it for around 30 seconds and then we're going to remove that ethanol. And this time we want to get as much of the ethanol out as possible. So, what I tend to do is use a big pipette to begin with and then use a smaller gauge pipette to try and remove the last of the liquid because it's easier to not disturb the pellet this way. We then need to leave the pellet to dry. This takes around 30 seconds, but really it's by eye making sure the pellet isn't too dry and also isn't too damp. Once you're happy with the dryness of your pellet, you can take it off the magnetic rack and we're going to add 15 microliters of elution buffer. Make sure that you've got all of the beads into the elution buffer because we want the DNA to come off the beads and into the elution buffer. We're going to spin it down and then we're going to leave it for five minutes at room temperature. Once the incubation has finished, we then need to put the DNA and the beads back on the magnet. This is to separate the beads from the DNA, which now should be in the ablution buffer. So again, give it around at least one minute. Once the DNA has separated from the beads, you need to then take out the eluent. What it says is remove 15 microliters, but that can be very difficult without beads. 
What you actually need is generally much less. So I tend to remove about 12. You need one for um, cubiting the pool and then the rest um, to make up um, the final pooling in the next steps. So I'm gonna just take out 12. You need to make sure your DNA is very, very clear so you can check it against a white surface. And that's what you'll need for the next steps. Obviously you can save that if you do need to get more out. So you need to use one microliter to cubit this to identify the concentration. Uh, and also you want to either tape station or gel electrophoresis or bioanalyze it to identify the size of the DNA because we're gonna need this in the next step because what we need to do next is identify how much DNA we've got um, to make up our final concentration. So we need 10 to 50 uh, femtomoles. And what we're gonna do is utilize the NEB calculator that you can see on the spreadsheet. And we're gonna add the total nanograms in pool, so the cubit nanogram per microliter times volume of the pool. So here it's 1,690. Um, and also the tape station size, so 4,500. And that gives us the femtomoles, which is 888. And if we add that into the sequencing template, you can see that the amount of DNA that we need for our pool is um, 0.62 microliters, and then we're gonna add 10 microliters of dilution buffer because we need 11 microliters in total. So we're gonna do that now. So I'm gonna add 10.38 revolution buffer. So this is our cleaned up pool. The next thing we need to do is make up the rapid adapter and the adapter buffer in a separate tube which will make up five microliters. And then we need to add one microliter of this rapid adapter mix to our DNA. Now we've got our sample, it's time to prepare for loading the flow cell. And the first thing we need to do is prepare the flush buffer. In the new Ecuador tube, we need to prepare 1,170 microliters of flow cell flush. And 30 microliters of FCT or flow cell tether. You can also optionally add in 5 microliters of bovine albumin. the computer but because I'm recording it I'm going to do it on here. So this is the min iron and we're going to put the flow cell on the min iron. So you can see that it should match, it's got these spikes here and just put it in underneath. So where we're going to load this is under this spot here. For a better more detailed video um, click on the link. The most important thing is not to add air bubbles, so try and suck any air up first. So you should see you'll get a little bit of yellow. We're then going to add 200 microliters of the wash buffer that we just made.
this should slowly turn the screen from yellow to white. We're then going to add a further 800 to completely flush the pores. This you need to then set aside for five minutes and we can prepare the rest of the library while we wait. So we have 12 microliters of our DNA library. We're going to add 27.5 microliters of sequencing buffer. And 25.5 microliters of library beads. And again, a bit like the Ampure beads, make sure that they're well mixed. This is your final library, and this is what we're gonna load onto the flow cell. In total, we have 75 microliters. Give it a gentle flick just before you load it. And this time we're going to add it to the spot on the core. So you just drop it on above the hole and it should suck the DNA and the beads through. The only thing left to do now is close up all the ports and add the cover. Close them in iron and then this can be put on the machine. For the video of how to set up the sequencing run, see the link below.